Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. As of late, I've been falling back on my Sister of the Holy Flame build for more support using the Relic. However, I noticed something really interesting with a certain blessing on my melee weapon. Shred is a very interesting blessing that increases your bonus critical chance on chained hits, and it could stack up to 5 times. This pushes your crit chance to a max of 20% on just swinging your melee weapon. I was trying to find a decent weapon to test out with this build, and I came to the conclusion that the Heavy Eviscerator has some of the best sweeping with Cleave, even allowing you to hit multiple crits in a single sweep with a push attack. This crit build isn't probably what you think, but let me explain and show you how to optimize spamming your ability in mere seconds. Keep in mind that this is going to be a more optimized build for those that want to be able to constantly stagger enemies, as well as be aggressive when it comes to horde clearing. Let's start with the loadout, and I'll explain why this is important in a little bit. So I mentioned the Heavy Eviscerator is our main melee weapon. Now you can use other weapons that have cleave as well, I just find the Eviscerator to be a better fit since it provides me with more than enough damage, and like I said, it also gives me a great option to block and follow up with a push attack. That being said, I rolled mine to have more melee crit chance and damage to flak armored enemies since they're usually in the mix with the Horde, making my life a little bit more difficult. Next to those perks though, I have the Shred Blessing as I mentioned before, which will provide us with enough crit chance for what we need our class to be doing later on, and I took Savage Sweep for more cleave upon hitting it up to at least 3 enemies. You can also swap this out for Wrath as well, and that would also increase your cleave on hit. The main reason I had Savage Sweep is because it was already on my weapon, and it worked well for what I needed it to do. Now for some reliability, I went with the Revolver as my secondary, and that is mostly for dealing damage to any enemies from a distance, as well as taking down crushers and other bigger threats. Keep in mind, our ability is going to be used to give our team some breathing room and create staggers so they can assist with the bigger threats, but in case they can't, we can. Now for my perks, I went with damage to carapace armored enemies and unyielding enemies. The best blessings I felt that were best utilized with the Zealot build were Hand Cannon which provides us with rending on critical hits and Surgical which grants us 10% crit chance whenever we're aiming down sights. This can go up to 100% once you reach 10 stacks and the tier on this one just allows you to reach max stacks a little bit quicker. But with Hand Cannon, the higher the tier the better, since at the highest it can provide up to 80% rending which is huge for chunking through armor. As for my curios, I fluctuate from using 2 toughness and 1 wound, but sometimes I like to swap out my wound for a max health curios instead. A wound here is really nice since we're going to be frontlining a lot using the eviscerator for horde clearing, so it's not a bad option to take one just for safety reasons. For my perks, I'd recommend taking at least toughness regen speed and adding more toughness and health attached to that. You can of course use combat ability regen or opt in for whatever you find necessary too, but I like the little extra health and toughness for survivability. With curios, you can always swap out what you like, but the toughness regen is pretty much the only mandatory thing I would recommend since we're going to be feeding a lot of toughness into this build. Now before I explain my logic on this build, I want to show you all the talent tree first. Then I will explain what we're going to be doing to gain a ton of cooldown reduction. We're going to use our passives and ability modifiers to gain a tremendous amount of crit chance mixed with the damage to allow us to spam relic as much as possible. Let's start with our main ability, Chorus of Spiritual Fortitude. This ability allows us to wield a holy relic that pulses around us granting all of our allies in coherency, stun immunity, and invulnerability. Each time it pulses, everyone will replenish 45% toughness, and if at full toughness, it will gain plus 20 up to a total of plus 100 extra toughness. This ability has a 60 second cooldown, which seems like a long time, but it will not be for us. For our ability modifiers, I chose Banishing Light for the Stagger and Suppression. This is great for giving your whole team a break to reload, regroup, and re-engage. The next modifier I wanted was Ecclesiarch's Call. Whenever our relic pulses 5 times, everyone in Coherency receives a 20% damage buff. This is another great boost in keeping everyone in the fight, as well as giving everyone the necessary damage they need to fight anything pushing them. And with this final ability modifier, we can create the synergetic flow of keeping our relic off cooldown to spam healing for the whole team. With Invocation of Death, all melee critical hits reduce our combat ability cooldown by 1.5 seconds. And this is per hit, meaning if you cleave multiple targets with your Eviscerator, you can stack multiple crit hits. And with Shred, you can actually have a 1 in 5 chance of each of your hits being a crit hit. Throughout this video, watch my cooldown get reduced faster and faster each time I spam light attacks or push attacks and cleave through hordes. Our Blitz ability will be our Immolation Grenades, and this is for any time we need to put pressure on the enemy by blocking a path or killing a horde so we can focus on clearing out elites. You can of course save these whenever you feel like your team needs it most, but since you have 3, it's always worth saving at least 1 for a revive push. Since we're going to maximize the team's toughness with incoherency, we want to use Benediction for our aura. This will grant everyone 15% toughness damage reduction and should keep the team alive as our ability fades before another recast. 
Now our keystone abilities will raise the synergy up even further. With Blazing Piety, whenever 25 enemies are dead within 25 meters, we gain Fury. And Fury grants us a plus 15% critical hit chance for 8 seconds whenever we're in Fury. Since we want to gain Fury as quickly as possible, we want to take Fury Rising for the buff towards our critical hits, counting up towards triggering Fury. And for our last keystone modifier, I chose Righteous Warrior, which applies another 10% critical hit chance from Blazing Piety. As for our passives, I have a mix of abilities giving us buffs to our Revolver and Heavy Eviscerator. The first passive I want to talk about is Anoint in Blood. This gives our base range damage a plus 25% boost, however it'll be reduced on the amount of distance away from the target, so shoot close and dodge often. Backstabber is a great passive for saving teammates, as it gives us a plus 20% damage boost on any melee backstab hits. This will just be used more so as a passive whenever the situation calls for it. I chose Duelist for the plus 50% weak spot and critical hit damage for 3 seconds upon a successful dodge. This wasn't showing up visually for me whenever I was dodging, which might be a visual bug, but I still felt like I was outputting more damage than usual with this one. Regardless though, I took the chance on picking this one in hopes that it was just more of a visual issue. Next up, we have Enduring Faith. This grants us plus 50% toughness damage reduction on all critical hits for 4 seconds. This will keep us swinging even while being hit with little damage to our toughness. We want Faithful Frenzy for the 10% melee attack speed, again for cleaving as much as we can and spamming light attacks with our Eviscerator. I have Until Death as the ace up our sleeve for any emergencies. This will prevent us from dying for at least 5 seconds and its passive cooldown is only 2 minutes, meaning you can proc this again if needed after a rough fight. Until Death is a godly passive that keeps us in the fight even when we should be downed, and works incredibly well with another passive called Holy Revenant. With Holy Revenant we regain health based off of the damage dealt whenever Until Death procs. This allows us to tank damage and receive health back upon outputting as much damage as we can in that time. We can only receive up to 25% of our maximum health, but that's more than enough if things go south. This is our trump card for whenever we're in trouble. But again, this passive is meant for emergencies, since it can actually come in clutch if we need to push to save our teammates or ourselves. With punishment, our melee attacks that can hit at least 3 enemies grant us 30% impact strength for 5 seconds, and it can stack up to 5 times. At max stacks, we gain uninterruptible. Uninterruptible prevents you from being interrupted mid-attack or whatever action you're performing. This prevents a stagger mid-attack animation, allowing you to cleave more targets without worrying about being pushed off. I wanted Purge the Unclean for the 20% increased damage to infested enemies for horde clearing, but the additional damage to unyielding enemies is also incredibly nice. Restoring Faith allows us to heal a quarter of the damage that we receive upon taking damage to our health, and this occurs over 5 seconds, and again, this will be used passively to gain health back naturally. And lastly, Scourge, for applying bleed to our crit hits, but not only that. The main reason we want this passive is to apply bleed to an enemy and then get the 10% crit chance for the 3 seconds and try to pick up stacks. Again, this is passively happening when we're cleaving through enemies in the horde and will stack naturally. As for my operative modifiers, we have boost in melee damage, movement speed, toughness, and damage reduction. We also have a node in suppression, so if enemies are shooting at you, shoot back and they'll hunker down and hide. I've run through all of my contracts this week with this build on my Zealot, and it was a ton of fun. It felt different to be able to be both aggressive and defensive, but it felt best when I can move in and save my teammates, or keep them from going down using my Holy Relic. Supporting my team is what I enjoy most in Darktide, and keeping the team moving is where this class truly shines. Constant spamming with the Relic while also being able to dictate the way encounters go hasn't felt better than this. You tag enemies that are a priority when you're using the Relic, and watch your team take them down together. I use this class to gauge how effective my team is whenever we're being put under pressure. And a great way to give people confidence in this game is to play right beside them. I hope some of you give this build a shot and let me know what you think in the comments. And like always, I'm open to everyone's feedback on making things better for the build too. I had a bunch of fun just testing out to see if this would work, and I was so surprised that I was literally able to cut down tons of time on my cooldown with a few swings from my Eviscerator. If you do give this build a shot, just remember to spam your relic when you can, and just keep on swinging. Anyways. I'm going to go jump into another match and preach my love for the Emperor to my comrades, but just in case you forgot, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Take care of yourself, and enjoy the rest of the match.
Resupply your ammo, Rocknet.
Thank you. 